Hey y'all, this is Shanti coming to you with another video here on my channel with Shanti J Speaks coming to you with another one. Now let me just, let me go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, so today is a light video day. I kind of want to talk about IVF and the whole fertility experience, right? So a lot of people come into the fertility clinic and they think this is supposed to be a walk in the park. This video is to prepare you for what's to come in the fertility clinic not to say that it's like a bad oh my god horrible experience but it's a lot of things that come that are mental it's a lot of things that come that are physical and it's a million things that come that will make you have emotional stress and problems right first things first when you call the fertility clinic please ex don't expect to get in right away because not just you have these issues there are other women who have these issues that have already been going through treatment already and if you're a new patient it might be very challenging for you to get in depending on where you go um it may you know you might be frustrated because you might say well i'm i'm, I'm about to get my cycle right now and i want to start right now but it might not happen until you're they might not start you to your next cycle because that's probably when they can get you in to be evaluated so i do want to give you a heads up there another thing when you come to the fertility clinic there is a lot a lot a lot of blood draws blood draws blood draws what I want to say that I can't say in the clinic but I'm gonna say it here because this is my channel and I can pretty much say what I want to say because Shanti J speaks but if you can't take a needle going in your arm to draw blood how are you going to take pushing out a six to 10 pound baby from your Wuha. So if you're gonna go to the fertility clinic, I need you to put your big girl panties on. I don't need you going into their lab and going poo, 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 every time they draw your blood. Why? Because you have to get this done so often that you should, you should probably train your brain that this is something that's gonna happen every time I come. And understand that nobody is here to hurt you. Nobody is here to physically cause you pain. Nobody is here to physically just yank your arm and throw a needle in there and take all your blood from you. No, that's not how it works. But you have to give a little because they're giving so much at the clinic already for you. So don't go being a difficult patient. Don't go be being high maintenance because if you think about it, everybody feels like they're high maintenance, especially at the fertility clinic. Everybody wants answers. Everybody wants the answers now. Everybody wants their blood drawn now. Everybody wants an ultrasound right now. Everybody wants to talk to the doctor right now. Everybody wants to talk to the nurse right now. Everybody wants the, the phlebotomist to draw the blood right now. No, please do not become that patient. Please do not become that person that goes in telling the doctors what they should do and go in telling the phlebotomist which vein they should pick because they all have went to school for this and you have not, okay? I just felt the need to say that because we have some women who come in and they're, you know, they feel like this is supposed to be like the, 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 the Lux or um, this is supposed to be like the White House or something like that. And no, this is just us trying to get you your goal you, for you to have a baby. This is not for us to kiss ass, sorry. Pardon my French, I know I don't really curse. But this is not for that. And we have patients that come into the fertility clinic. Ah, I only want this person. Ah, I only want that sonographer. And I'm gonna just tell you this. There's gonna come a time when that sonographer or that phlebotomist is not in the office. And guess what's gonna happen? You're gonna have an appointment. And you're going to have an appointment with the person that you said that you didn't want. And how do you think that person feels seeing your name on the schedule as well? So please be kind. Please be mindful that it's, I, we understand that the hormones is raging. We understand the stress of trying to have a baby. We understand the losses. We understand all of it. We grieve with our patients. We really do. We celebrate with them and we grieve with them. Because we want that baby too. We working 
hours of the day trying to get you the result that you want and when it doesn't come out the way that you want it it devastates us too in a way it's like our baby too <laughs> but we don't say that but in a sense it, it really is because we're doing i mean we see these women every single day coming in here for blood draws and ultrasound blood draw ultrasound blood draw ultrasound every day and be prepared that if your body requires you to come into the fertility clinic every morning for a morning monitoring scan to see where your hormones are with the blood work and to see where your ovaries are with the ultrasound, if you have to do that every day for a year straight, please be prepared because your body may not be responding to one thing they do they might have to do something else and then they have to monitor you again and they have to get your body primed for what's about to take place inside of it everybody just thinks like oh i'm just gonna go to a fertility clinic and they're just gonna give me a baby i'm gonna have twins i'm gonna, have, I'm gonna pick a boy and i'm gonna pick a girl no not how it works um in my last video i did discuss how they make the baby in the dish in the lab and from that point we can test that um, embryo to see what chromosomes they have, whether they have a boy chromosome or a girl chromosome. From there, we, de we decide which one will be more um, viable, which means which one is gonna have the most success in making it to the end, making it to being birthed, making it to this world. So they will give out numbers, for instance, um, four, if you have a four, a number four, so let's say you have a boy, but he's a number four. That's a good thing. But you have a girl and she's a number two. But you want a girl. But if you pick the number two, you have a less chance of that being successful than the number four. So everybody always gets this confused with fertility, IVF, and all these things. We don't let you choose the sex. And if we do let you choose it, it's only because the girl is a four, the boy is a four. The girl is a three, the boy is a three. So you can either choose which one, it really wouldn't matter. But you are advised if you choose a number two and you have a number four, which is four being good, one being not good. So if you have a two that's a girl, but a four that's a boy, and you're like, I don't want a boy, I want a girl, then you stand the risk of causing a miscarriage. You stand the risk of having a failed pregnancy with the number two because you wanted a gender instead of a healthy baby. So the whole goal is to have a healthy baby, not to be able to pick a gender so that you can put borets and things in their hair and all of that. That's not the goal. With these women, they're just happy to have a healthy baby. So some women who come with the wrong idea, this video is for you because you just can't come in there thinking that you're gonna just choose what you want. No, you're gonna choose, you're gonna get what God wants you to have. And it's all gonna say in the numbers. Now, if you choose to go opposite of what the doctor advises, then of course you're in, tro in control of your own care. You can make your own decisions, but it's strongly advised against going with a lesser number than a number three or a four, depending on no matter what the gender is honestly um another thing i wanted to discuss is when you come to the fertility clinic and not saying that you shouldn't bring your spouse but i what i've noticed in my about to be five years in the fertility world is that when women bring their their spouse they act a little suspect now these are women that I see all the time. I've seen them go through, procedure, go through procedures as well with flying colors. But the minute their spouse is in the room, they, uh, oh, that hurts, oh, ow, oh. And you want them to feel sorry for you. It doesn't work. So you can stop the act with that whole, I want them to care more because I have to go through this. It's, it's pity. That's what it is. Your husband wants you or your significant other wants you to go into this being strong. To go into this, I mean, yeah, there's going to be some hurts. Yeah, you're going to have a procedure that's going to be uncomfortable. We understand that. But when you're having an ultrasound, when you're having your blood drawn, and your spouse is literally right there standing watching you do it, and you're... be okay I can never get used to this
and then the next day you come in and I draw your blood and you're fine. No. So if you're going to bring your spouse or a partner there, let them be able to see what you have to go through without all the extra. It's enough already. They don't need the extra. They don't need the extra, you know, crying and tears and all of that. And and it's just a it's just a blood draw. <laughs> it's just the ultrasound, and not an ultrasound to see if a baby's inside. Just an ultrasound just to check on your well-being of everything inside. Honestly, I get most women want to show like that. This is really more so male to female ratio. Most women want to show their man what they have to go through to have his baby. And truthfully, it's us that that has something going on inside of our bodies that can do it the normal way like everyone else. So why would you want any more to be on you? Like, I, 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 I just will never, I will never get that. So with women that can have a natural pregnancy and this guy can go out and have a baby just like that, you want him to feel sorry for you because you can't do it just like that? No. Don't feel sorry for yourself, ladies. Pick yourself up. Tell yourself that whatever you want, if you set your mind to it, you can do it. And if it's in God's plan, it will happen for you. But all this extra about like the man doesn't understand and all of that, how can they? How can they understand a woman, first of all? But let alone, how can they understand the longing of wanting to be a mom? How can they understand the pain that we go through? They don't even understand the pain that we go through on a monthly basis with our cycles. So you want them to understand a process that you have to go through to bring a child here in which they feel like they can just do wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And they always thought it would be just that easy. But now you want them to feel sad or guilty for you because you have to go through this. No, don't do that. Don't do that. It's okay that we have to go through this. We just need an extra push. We just need a little extra just to get us over the threshold. But the end goal is still the same, and that's to have a baby. But a lot of times, you know, when women go through this fertility treatments or the fertility centers, they are a little bit much when it comes to just being a little extra. And we hear the concerns we hear, you know, the longing and we, 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 we want so bad. Like we say to, for all our patients, oh my God, I, I, I hope that, you know, that this baby is good. I hope that she is pregnant or I hope that this lab result comes back and says that she has a positive pregnancy test. Like we really do hope for those things. We have occasions where we have a selected few. I would say about 5%, which is not a lot. But we have a, a small group of women who come to the fertility clinic with the expectation that it's all you and nobody else. Um, we have women that come to the fertility clinic already with frustrations from other clinics that they have fails at. Um, we get attitudes from women because they have to come in every day. They don't want to have to do this every day. But then why attack the people that's trying to help you do it? because they're there every day too this is just a fertility video just to just like to help you guys when it comes to your office visit and the do's and don'ts of you know the situation you can get a lot more done with sugar than salt if that makes sense it's an old country saying uh, don't even ask me where it came from but you can get a lot more done with sweetness than tartness bitterness sourness so, for instance, the same medical assistant, the same phlebotomist, the same nurse that you told off or that you were upset because your hormones were all off or whatever the case may be, it's the same person that's going to have to help you to your goal. It's the same person that's, that's going to have to put in medications for you and orders. It's the same person that's going to have to draw your blood. It's the same person that's going to have to do your ultrasound. And you're going to have to look them in their face and act like nothing happened or that you were never disrespectful or never rude to them and they will remember you forever. Every time your name comes up on the schedule, they will remember the time that you showed your ass.
you don't want to be that person don't be that person and i see women come to the fertility clinic all the time and they like well why why can't i have this and why can't i do that because you can't because you can't and it's already bad enough that you know there's so much that goes into the fertility world that's behind the scenes um the patient feels overwhelmed because there's a lot of information being thrown at them but if you think about the back side of things it's a lot being thrown at the nurses and the doctors and the medical assistants to try to get you what you need in your end goal as well so it has to be an equal medium somewhere you can't come in on your high horse and you can't come in with eeyore don't come in like eeyore either oh i'm just doing all right oh i'm just here oh i'm just i'm just trying to have a baby oh come on draw my blood no positive 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 come in with a positive mind you will leave out with a positive mind come in with positive thinking you will leave out positive thinking even when the negative happens for instance if you have a loss you will cry you will be sad you will be burdened you will be sorrowful all of that but you will have the hope that when all those tears are dried up you can try again and i think that's the beauty of going to a fertility clinic and you know it's like you get that hope and you see that it can happen you can, you can get pregnant. You can get a positive test. But now it's just going to take a little bit more tuning to get you to carry that baby long term. And I tell all of my patients, mind over body. If you tell your mind something, it will send the signal to the rest of your body. So for instance, let me give you guys an example before I go. A patient came in and I was, um, you know, about to draw her blood and everything. And she said... I know I'm not pregnant. Um, would I ordered a pregnancy test for you so that we can check the blood to see if you're pregnant. Oh, but I know I'm not pregnant. I know I'm not. And even if I am, it, I might miscarry. Why would you say that? What comes out of your mouth? Once again, back to my previous videos. Manifestation, what comes out of your mouth? And even if it doesn't come out of your mouth, it still may happen. It still may happen with just the thought. And even if you don't have the thought, and even if you don't speak it out your mouth, even if you are positive, there's a possibility that there still can be a loss. And losses are not good for anybody. When the clinic has a loss, it we, we really feel that loss. We really feel that loss and for me who already went through my own fertility journey and to see someone else going through it or to see someone else having an ectopic it hits me in a different way so when you come into the clinic and you're being mean and you're being nasty and all of these things you don't know nobody else's story for instance i have people come in being mean to me all the time do they know i had an ectopic pregnancy and i'm going through fertility treatments myself no they don't but they attack me because of their own emotional issues, because of their own mental, you know, state that they're going through with this whole baby situation. But I urge you, don't be that patient. Come in with an open mindset. Come in with a positive mind. Come in with, you know, mind of a body mentality. Come in treating everybody nice because everybody's going to treat you nice. Come in with the best hopes and the best wishes. And even if there are some disappointment keep that focus on what you want and you will eventually get it most importantly you have to pray you have to pray if you don't pray you're trying to do this on your own and god's gift of life is his to give so if you're trying to do this on your own and you have not consulted god i urge you tonight after you finish watching this video or today, after you finish watching this video, Lord, is it my time? Lord, do you want me to have a baby right now? Lord, is this the right person? Lord, what is it that you want me to do? And seek him and see what he says first. Because a lot of times we're trying to do it ourselves 
and and then there's a miss after miss after miss after miss miscarriage after miscarriage miscarriage and then we wonder why and it's because it's not in divine timing and the same thing goes with me like I was actually married and I was wondering why isn't this the right time why am I not you know, producing. God, you said you want us to be fruitful and multiply and all of that thing, you know. But I had to come to the realization that if God wants something, he will do it. And if he doesn't want something, he will take it away. So I just urge you guys, if you come into the fertility clinic and you have to take fertility treatments, it's okay. All of us are not made the same. All of our bodies are different. But at the end of the day, there I go again, at the end of the day, you can still get your end goal. You can still do it. I just ask that you do it with kindness. Do it with peace. Do it being polite. Do it with love. Because all of those energies are just going to come right back to you. And then next thing you know, you'll be thanking those people that you had to see every day, even though you cursed them out. You'll be thanking them because you'll be walking out with your pregnancy. You'll be coming back showing us the baby. And that's another thing. Oh, when you leave the fertility clinic, it saddens our hearts to see you guys go because we know that after we all say bye-bye to us, y'all ain't gonna think about us no more. Y'all don't think about us no more. But we would love for you guys to send pictures of the baby that we worked so hard for. We would love for you guys to actually bring the baby in for us to see the miracle that keeps us going in our jobs, that keeps us going in our day. When, and I, I, I lie to you not, we'll probably birth probably thousands of babies in a year. And probably only two or three people will come to the office after the baby is, you know, a couple of months old, and only two or three people out of those thousands will come to the clinic to show us their baby. And it's sad because the OBs, they get the the best part of it. They get to see all the arms moving, legs moving. They get to see the baby getting bigger and everything, but they don't know the struggle that it took for us to get you there. And yet, after you guys are gone, you guys forget about us until it's time for you to have your next baby, of course. So, you know, as a as a medical professional, it just will brighten my day so much for someone to say, hey, so-and-so's out here with that baby. She wants you guys to come see. And we all just, you know, run out there and we are so delighted and we are so overjoyed. And for the patients that are sitting in the waiting room that don't have your baby, when they bring their baby in, don't become bitter. Just know that your time is coming and we're gonna celebrate you the same way. And it should be a notion to you that blessings and miracles are still happening and they can still happen for you. Because at the end of the day, you don't know nobody's story. You don't. Some of our patients have been going through fertility treatments for four years. And I've been seeing them, if not every day, every other day. And if not every other day, at least weekly for four years. And I'm still hoping and I'm still praying that God give them what they've been praying for. And even if it's just one, I'm praying that God just bless them with that baby. Because we have gotten a relationship. We've grown with me seeing these people every day, me sending procedures for them, me, you know, drawing their blood, me, you know, ordering labs, me, you know, getting ice packs and when they're not feeling well and me taking care of them and then when they have their first ultrasound, I'm there. And it's just like, some ultrasounds are good, some ultrasounds are not good, but the ones that are not good, I'm hugging my patients, we're, we're crying through it and we just gotta, you know, I tell them we gotta go through this thing again, don't give up hope. And for the ones that do, end up having a pregnancy, a successful pregnancy, we're like, yay, we're celebrating, you're graduating, we're doing all these things for you, just to show you that we're happy for you too. So we have a lot on our plates at the fertility clinic, we really do. And it takes a special kind of person to work at a fertility clinic when you've had your own fertility struggles. 
And a lot of women at the fertility clinic, at least where I work, have had their own personal fertility stories. And I was just added to the bunch in 2019 with my ectopic pregnancy. But before that, we had a lot of people in my in my job, especially in my office, my location. And we're, we're small um, as far as our location is concerned about how many people are in the office. So we kind of know each other's stories. And um, you'll just be surprised at how many people have this struggle. And it is not just you. So don't be the Krabby Patty coming into the fertility clinic telling them what you're going to do and telling them what you ain't going to do and telling them what they better do and telling them what they not going to do and where they can shove it. Don't do that. Because another thing is you can get um, ejected from a fertility clinic. Just so you know, we can choose to not give you care anymore based off your attitude and your actions, based off how you treat staff. I just want to throw that out there. Everybody feel like, oh no, you, you got my money, you got my insurance. Yeah, there's also other fertility clinics that take it as well. But one thing, if you want the best care and you come into the best places, they have policies in place where they can reject you. And if you have constant no-shows, which means you don't call, you don't reschedule, you just don't come to your appointment and you take that slot that somebody else could have had, you also can get ejected from the fertility clinic that way as well. Um, you know, some people have incorporated, you get a $25 late fee or $50 late fee or, you know, they charge you for the visit and all that. Prestige places, they don't charge you for missing your appointment or being late. They just put you as a no-show. And four or five no-shows, now the doctor can determine what they want to do with you if they want to continue care with you or not because you're not serious about your own care. So I've said enough, said more than enough, and I've talked way too much, but I just hope that you guys get this video. Be nice, be kind, don't be mean, and get that baby. Okay? See ya!